Welcome to the second episode of Series 22, everyone. A catacon has come and gone, and many apologies for the late episode this week. But we will be back on schedule at our normal day and time next week with the conclusion of this series. We had a lot of fun recording with Hannah and Evan, and I don't believe there's really any announcements to talk about, and I'm actually pretty sleepy with this heavy-hitting con drop. So... How about we just get into the episode? Enjoy. Last time on Character Creation Cast, we all created unnamed ghosts ready to dive into a fresh new world. Hannah picked the Mischief Maker, Evan picked the Gardener, Amelia picked the Investigator, and I picked the Builder. We're picking up right where we left off right now. Enjoy. But now we're going to make people within the people. (laughs) Ooh. And these people who, who that make our people, people are making people, yeah. are people who make <laughs> it's people. It's peopleception. <laughs> yes. Uh, maybe some of them will be the people that were made by the people who make people. Oh my gosh, this hurts my brain. <laughs> 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 what have you done, Ryan? <laughs> <laughs> and then, then you got to wonder if those people make people. Ryan, stop. So, <laughs> <laughs> no more. I can't. <laughs> this is the so, fantasy singularity. Ooh, yeah. Let's Let's make make a place. place. So let me frame what's about to happen here. This is the point where the game setup is over, and now we're playing. So, or to put it another way, from here on, setup and play continue together. Mm. For infinity. (laughs) On our turns, Uh as ghosts, we are able to introduce new elements of the setting, uh, to expand on those elements or connect them together, to change what's happening in the kingdom by introducing new troubles or to set scenes and bring specific characters into a scene and get down to a real moment-to-moment level. And those are all available as a choice every single turn for each one of us from here on in. So, you know, I don't want to... Playing the game is not normally part of the character creation cast at this point. Mm. But this whole so game is kind I'm of just proposing, creating, so... Yeah. Yeah. I'm proposing at this point that we don't call for scenes, but that we do begin the process of creating this world mm-hmm. and creating the characters within it. And maybe when we feel like we have a good cast and we feel like we're getting to the point where we would want to call for a scene and start to put things into motion, we can call it there or even cap things with a advancing of the moon phase Ooh. which is another special thing that you can do on your turn Ooh. one of the documents that was in the folder that you all received in a clandestine message before we began <laughs> will it self-destruct that's all i need to know <laughs> <laughs> um is the phases of the moon your connection to the world um this tracks both the events of the world our connection to it as ghosts like how much influence we have over the world waxes and wane and also the opening of the ghost passage that would let us leave Mm. at this moment we are in the waxing phase of this world heading towards the full moon and by advancing that phase it brings us closer to both the crisis point of this world and the opening of the ghost passage if we chose to stay past the ghost passage the world would undergo a huge transformation So staying for another uh, round of phases tends to dramatically change the world that you're in for each cycle. Cool. Interesting. I'm very excited for this. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. Is this the shortest character creation you've had on Character Creation (laughs) Cast? I mean, it it might be. (laughs) Um, Yeah, just about. um, (laughs) So... 
Hannah, do you want to just go yeah, into so detail just to sort of what it's like to introduce an element and maybe get us started? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you ask for who did you? I, I yeah, I asked for oh, you to okay. do it. I, I did not mean to follow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> cool. So yeah, just as a reminder, on your turn, you can introduce a new element, expand on an existing element, reveal a new trouble, set a scene, which we're not going to do here, advance the moon phase, which is, you know, advanced maneuvers, maybe we'll only do at the end, or introduce a touchstone. Um, mm. And then there's little little descriptions of how each of those work, but feel free to ask questions. So... Uh, I'm going to introduce an element, and let's see, what do we know? We're in Iris, we're building people who build people who build people. Um, <laughs> I think I'm going to introduce a new NPC. I'm going to say they are a person who has been built. Um, and they are like a sort of a, a baby person. But they are a full-grown person, but, you know, baby in that they are sort of just awakening in some way after their construction. Um, and I'm going to call them... It's always the stupidest names that pop into my head. <laughs> I'm like, not Blart. Don't say Blart. <laughs> I have my book. So if we want, oh, we can just yeah, like randomly... Yeah, have... get, get me a name. That would be great. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, do you have preferred pronouns for this person? Uh, let's say they, they, them. Okay. Then I am going to go and look. There's a specifically a list in here of androgynous or gender neutral names too. Cool. Also, um, let's see here. How about Camden? I love it. Yeah. So uh, everybody should ask. The way that this works is that everybody should just ask me one follow-up question about Camden Ooh. so we can build them out a little bit. Okay. And we can ask anything we want? Anything, yeah. Okay. Um, I want to know, um, what is what does Camden believe their personal purpose is in this process of building people? Because I assume we're making people that build people. Right? Is that all they do here? Yeah. I don't know. That's not really about there's this probably, person. That's a whole other bigger I don't question. Know. Yeah, there's a yeah. whole lot of questions to be answered. Uh -huh. Um, I think that I I think Camden doesn't know their purpose yet. Ooh. I think that they're uh, sort of awaiting, uh, ready to discover it. Does Camden have any um, special relationship to their builder? Yeah, I think Camden feels uh, like a, a loving affinity for their builder. Cool. Hmm. Um, like just generally, uh, what sort of form does Camden have? I think that Camden is, hmm, I'd like to ask other people if there's something, like if you have a visual for Camden, if, if anything sort of popped into anybody's mind. My, I mean, to be honest, I'm imagining some extra arms. <laughs> Fair. Ooh, I guess if you're going to build like, people. Uh, yeah. Right? That's like, if you get to choose how many arms people have, uh, maybe we go with four. <laughs> Ryan, was there something you were going to say also? Um, for some reason, like, as we were talking about people building people building people, um, the first thing that popped into my mind, you know those um, those wooden, posable, like, drawing uh, aids? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, some they, oh, they kind of look cool. like that, yeah, but with four arms, so I guess, like simplified geometric. Oh, I'm super yeah. into that body parts, yeah. So forms. they have um extra arms, but are sort of you know that that type of wooden simplified shapes. Um, I think that like they slightly resemble the builder. Um, I, I think of it as like this is partly an artistic process, and so like there's a school of thought for each build and you are influenced by like who built you and then who you build and like down the line, like artists are influenced by like where they learned their craft and from whom and things like that. So I feel like I envision it as like a thing that's like continually expanding, but you can sort of see the tree of like where things came from. Cool. I love that. There's like a trope of, you know, built people 
all looking very identical. And I like the idea that there's a lot more sort of artistic freedom in the creation of these people and variation between them. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, And I didn't say this before, but I'll say this now that like in this process, uh, safety tools and veto apply. So like if anybody says something that people want to pivot from, uh, feel free to do that. And you can also use like expanding on an existing element to sort of bring a conversation in a new direction. So Mm -hmm. to be like, I want to expand on this because this idea is like not quite gelling with me yet. Um, Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's my, uh, that's my addendum. All right. Uh, Cool. Yeah. So that's, I'm going to call that my turn. Okay. Okay. That's really interesting. Nice. Yeah. I like that. Um, I don't know. Ryan, do you want to go next? Sure. This is usually your jam. I'm going to let you see where this goes. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's really interesting. Um, I'm going to um, introduce a, a location. Cool. And I'm going to say it is. Um, it's almost like a like a museum or a hall of fame type deal for mm-hmm. uh, historical builders. Oh, that's neat. Oh, cool. Um, okay, I'm going to ask. Uh, are there a lot of builders? in the hall of fame or is it a pretty like um you know exclusive club here um i'm gonna say there's a ton since it's uh since it's a big staple of the society Mm -hmm. um it it almost feels like the the building itself is continually growing to continue to add newer builders cool that are doing uh interesting and new things with the building process of people. And it even includes the people that are being built that are also building people. <laughs> so it's, there's kind of like generational wings. Oh, as well. that's awesome. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, who is in charge of deciding uh, who ends up in this museum? That's a good question. I want to say um, it's kind of like uh, a given if you are recognized as a builder of these people, mm-hmm. um, as long as you create life, then you are allowed to become one of the people featured in this uh, this building. So it's somewhat self-selected. Yes. Cool. cool. Are there reasons that people would specifically opt out of being in this Hall of Fame? I want to... I want to say that the only way to opt out is to never reveal that you have built other life Ooh. to society. Oh. You have to be cool. kind of, you kind of have to do that work in secret. Um, it's almost like a, uh, it's almost like a physical Wikipedia oh, of cool. all the builders. Yeah. I like it. Um, uh, Evan, do you want to go next or do you want me to go or? Um, I'm happy to go. I have an idea. Oh, do it then. From the way that last conversation went. Um, I'd like to introduce an aspect of this setting, which is uh, camouflaged or mimicking people that are created uh, as a strategy to keep them out of the museum, to keep them out of the official records. Uh, There is an art to making people who can fold themselves up into a chair (laughs) or... Hmm. who can become very flat or can somehow hide themselves or camouflage themselves so that they are not picked up, they're not registered, and they can perform actions that are not generally permitted. Oh. Ooh. Interesting. So my question is, what sorts of actions are not permitted? Well, we have a lot to get into <laughs> there, right? Let's not do an, ex- an exhaustive <laughs> rundown. But or maybe then like um, what I what think, things are like are permitted or are accepted, you know, either way. I think um, ending the life of somebody else might not be permitted, but possibly with an exception for life that you yourself have created. Oh, that's dark. Oh, that is super dark. You know, we let a yeah, you know, we let an artist have control over their canvas, even if they want to scrap it and start over. Oh man. So we're we're really getting into this like 
are the sentient creations that we create actually sentient sort of discussion. <laughs> and like, at what point is your art not yours anymore? Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, part of what's being forbidden is itself just the act of not having it registered as part of the museum, mm -hmm. as part of your official creation. Mm. So just existing in a way that isn't cataloged and known by satellite, by society at large, is forbidden. Hmm. Oh, I have so many more questions. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a question formulating. Um, okay, so uh, people creating camouflage or, or people that can mimic other objects to stay hidden, um, and you can end the life of your own creations, that's allowed. Is there ever a point where you are not allowed to end your own creations? I think that the the entrance of it into the museum archives is exactly that point. Mm. Awesome. That's where now it is given the rights of a living being. Oh wow. So <laughs> with <laughs> whoa, whoa. This is whew. I really so, like this. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Um I'm can I pass on a question? Of course. There's just like two, it's your game. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> I really, you make the rules. We don't really have all right, so I'm gonna say that you can pass on a question if you feel like, you know, we've either said enough about this or if there is too much more to say. <laughs> um Well, yeah, remember that one option is always that you can expand on an element that's already here. So if you wanted to return mm -hmm. to this, you could take your whole turn to introduce a new part of it that gets its own questions. That's amazing. Yeah. I'm going to pass because I want to just like sit with this for a minute. Cool. Yeah, this is really interesting. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I know. Like, where do I go from here? One thing that you can do, just to throw out an option, mm -hmm. um, if you're not sure about what kind of element you want to introduce, rolling for a trouble is a really simple one. The dice get involved, so there's some randomness, and it will add a new pressure to the setting. Mm. But if you have something else cooking, don't let me stop you. I, I kind of do. Um, although I do, I'm. We'll get to that maybe. I, was like, I do want to <laughs> see what happens when you randomly roll things. I like doing that. Um, I, I think I want to add a location. Ooh. Um. I think because you have all of these unregistered people, essentially, um, mm -hmm. I imagine that there's some sort of like cooperative or something where they all congregate. Because I think functioning within society when you're not like part of this, you know, like registered group is probably difficult. I imagine it being like, you know, like if you don't have a social security number or something like, mm -hmm. um, so you sort of have to like make your own portion of this world. And so I think that there's probably somewhere that they all kind of congregate or is like their, their group area. Cool. Interesting. Is it a place that's hidden in plain sight? Hmm. Um, I don't think that it's all that hidden. I think it is like, like it's known that these kinds of people exist, that they aren't, you know, like registered or whatever. It's just that their ability to, um, to do things is sort of limited by that factor. Um, so I don't think that like their existence is necessarily like illegal or anything like that. It's just that it is difficult for them to do things. So I think that it's just maybe like kind of toward the edge of this town or area or something like that, but it's not like hidden or secret or like anything like that. Um, cool. yeah. And I don't think that there's any sort of like, need for it to be like i don't think that there's like any kind of like particular like discrimination or anything there it's just that like they don't have you know everybody needs like some kind of name or so like it's just sort of expected and they don't have that and everybody's like well i don't know what to do with that mm -hmm. cool, cool. Hmm. uh what kind of stuff do they do there um hmm. i'm wondering do these people like build people of their own or have they decided like they don't want to be a part of that i know i don't get to ask the oh. questions um, <laughs> you totally can. Though. You do. You yeah. actually can completely throw questions back yeah. to us. Okay. I mean, I You're feel like that's my my question charge. is like because if this is where they all like 
live because I said I imagine it's sort of like a cooperative kind of a thing. Um, mm -hmm. Are they continuing to build things? I like the idea that they're reluctant to, mm -hmm. that especially knowing that, you know, they're sort of off the grid, that they have a harder place in society. It's considered, you know, maybe a little irresponsible mm -hmm. to bring somebody into that state, create a new life that's doomed to be in there. So I, going back, I'm trying to process this. Um, they are like unregistered, like people didn't register them as their creations, right? Like the, it's not that these people decided not right. to. Mm -hmm. Right. Register. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just trying to remember how that worked. Who, where in the line of people yeah. <laughs> does this break down? <laughs> As we create the people who create the people yeah. that created the people. Well, we, we've already established that if these um, unregistered created people end up creating people that they register, then the unregistered become recognized and registered. Do they? In the, in the archives, right? Or, well, so in the archives, are you registering your creation or are you registering yourself? I think you're registering yourself. If your creation is not a build, a builder of people, oh, so then I thought you your were creation like, doesn't go in there. I but then like that, so I don't, I don't know if that makes sense though, because I'm trying to think that like, like if you register yourself, you could still create things and have them not be in there. Then it would be like your own choice to not be. I assumed that it was do like. either, like you can hmm. either register your creation um, mm -hmm. or your creation if unregistered can be like i'm unregistered i i don't know it opens up so many questions it's like if you're a creation so then, like, that can why have these yeah people not registered <laughs> is is there like then a stigma of um unregistered people creating other people I like there might maybe be. by the law once anybody creates another person they get into the archive, but they're kind of like snubbed by society. I mean, I like I know that we we want to make the world kind of complicated. I think for me, I'd rather avoid like the sort of like discriminatory aspect of that. Mm. Would one way to handle like uh, to sort of pivot away from that be to make it um, less about like society discriminating against you know these like unregistered this like process of unregistered creation and more that it's like sort of a snooty like a status thing a little bit like oh there's like, like the rogue artist collectives yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, i like that, that does that, that help sort of like yeah that sort of like w these people have said like <laughs> like with a weird no to their social like norms punk. like we're gonna mm -hmm. go like yeah <laughs> yes like we have our anarchist cooperative yeah over here. exactly yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I like that. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> Just trying to figure <laughs> out how to do it and like still make it interesting yeah, and complicated. It's but hard I, to I bring don't it wanna... all together. Yeah. And remember, like, what level of person are we at? <laughs> <laughs> we're so many, we're so many yeah. levels of people deep in this game. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Cool. So have I think we? That all... brings us back to Great. you. Great. Um. I'm gonna roll for a trouble then. Oh, fun. Ooh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. And other people can too. Um. But I don't want to make anything new without help from the dice. Um, okay, I rolled, uh, di I think that's a diamond. I think that's diamond. So yep. that would be a trouble related to wealth, desire, um, or resources. That is really interesting. Oh. Okay. Uh, wow. There's so many, so many directions that you can go with this. I, <laughs> yeah. all right, so I'm going to start and then... Uh, other people can add things or ask questions. I feel like maybe if we're talking about this being like a little bit of a regulated process of like, you know, this is what, you know, this is, this is what level of person you have to create to be entered into the museum. Um, mm -hmm. If there's like certain like materials and like standards you have to meet, like I wonder if our, uh, materials that we consider like life making are somehow limited or running out. Mm. Um, uh, something is is yeah. maybe interrupting the the flow of our people making. I like it. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll leave it. There. What are the consequences of compromising on the materials you make a person out of? Uh, 
you know, I don't want it to go in a direction of like, oh, it's like a wacky clone, you know, like I want every person to sort of be like full and have like self determination. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think that, you know, maybe it will be, I don't know. Do you just need a certain amount of it to even make the thing at all? Yeah, let's let's say that. I mean, So like you just maybe can't make from there? Maybe to some extent our reproduction and like the, you know, the continuation of our society relies on this process. Uh, Maybe it's not like sinister, but like, yeah, we make people. (laughs) This is the way, this is the way we continue our lines. Um, And I think, I mean, if you have like people making people making people, like it's exponentially growing too. Mm -hmm. So like there's a, you know, like there's a continued strain then on that resource. And so like, do you have to like clamp down on like and say like, okay, you can each only create one Mm -hmm. or two things. Like you can't like, oh man, I don't know how far, how, how much I can keep talking here. Um, But like, I wonder if that leads, no, but I wonder if that leads to then people saying like, well, if I can only, create one thing it needs to be a masterpiece you know Ooh, rather yeah. than That's being cool. like oh i can kind of right. like try things out and see you know and like have people have a lot of different mm-hmm. creations but like is there like this sudden sort of like school of thought of uh, the thing i create needs to be perfection right oh uh, good question uh, my mind <laughs> my mind went a little dark okay. for some reason um would this imply that down the line uh if these creations do not expire normally is there like potential for a kind of a an underground um recycling program Ooh. oh ryan uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh I'm going to say, you know, for the sake of not, I, I was just watching The Purge last night in the background, oh, no. and I was like, this is too much for me. <laughs> just in the background? <laughs> yeah, as you just do. in the background while working on Questlandia. Um, <laughs> uh, I think that, uh, what if they do expire naturally? And like there is, mm. and, and maybe even uh, people have some some control over like there's this point at which you're like oh i feel like i've you know i feel like i've lived my full life or um Mm -hmm. so so sort of continuing to center the issue then on more like a a potential shortage of life making uh Mm -hmm. materials so effectively society can only grow so big yeah with with whatever materials are available I, in both directions. Yeah, I think if we're making too many people, there's a research resource shortage, and uh, if there's not enough people, there's a resource shortage. So interesting. That's what I'll say. Is this a new discovery? This shortage. How many questions do I get to ask? Can I keep asking uh, questions? You I don't could, know if I'm only supposed to ask you one. And <laughs> if you want to, yeah, if you want to, like, wait on it, and you can expand on your. Okay, I'm like, gonna think. All about right, this, this resource shortage. <laughs> I got more questions. <laughs> um, Evan, I can't remember if you asked something or not. Um, what do you think about this resource being um, a special kind of wood that comes from a special kind of tree that has to be grown? It takes many years to grow the tree, um, and the resource is limited by that rate, and something has happened that's disrupted our ability to grow the trees or to slow them down. And that's what's creating this new pressure on us. I'm into it. I like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like it. It answers some of the most complex questions I had about the, our sort of self-regulating government. I like putting it on trees instead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. That's amazing. Yeah, I'm into this world already. <laughs> yeah, who's right. who wants to go next? Um, I will, if we want. Mm-hmm. Um, would you like to roll for me? Oh, yes, certainly. Ooh, another trouble. Cool. I like making things complex and difficult. <laughs> <laughs> I like making things tough for the people around me. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm rolling. Why was I waiting for... <laughs> I was like, tell me what to roll. Uh, oh, it's another diamond. Oh, Ooh. no. That oh, compounds the effect, right? So it, yeah, right. yeah. So it tends to compound. Like it's like there is something right now in the immediate that is uh, shifting our resource shortage to a dire situation. Okay. What is the economy of a place that just makes more people? Do they 
have to go somewhere? Are we making these people for a thing? Like, it's a good question. Great question. But, yeah, is this? I guess here's a, a backing up question about like this game in the worlds. And whenever I ask these questions, the answer is you tell me. But um, this world that we're in, like, are we only seeing a part of the world? Like, is this like one small nation in a country that we're in, or are we like in a world that we're in, or are we like, is this the whole thing? Generally, there's always more outside of us. And we can talk about how neighboring societies are different from us or what kind of relationships we have with them. Okay. So, yeah, to bring that in, I think it makes sense that we're exporting something. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I have weird... I I don't know. I have weird feelings about, like... (laughs) Obviously, like, this society is, like, built around creating people. But, like, I have weird gross feelings about exporting people yeah Um, same no people there is a thing (laughs) could be like some nations that just have excellent education programs and create certain kinds of professionals that are then uh you know popular throughout the world or spread Mm -hmm. like we could be creating uh uh people who are just absolutely experts at certain crafts or endeavors or knowledgeable things exporting them as scientists, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it's not so much that the government is like, we're going to send this person there. It's more that uh, the creations can decide where they want to go, what they want to do. But there is sort of a tax or a an amount that they give back to us when they live elsewhere. Interesting. And then, so then if we are making fewer people, then like... There are potentially fewer scientists, fewer doctors, fewer, mm-hmm. like, which is right. a very Less serious than, problem, yeah, um, yeah. like, uh, worldwide, then, if there just aren't people to, so not only is our society sort of in trouble because we can't make the thing that we make, but um, mm-hmm. then other nations or whatever can't do what they do because they don't have people to do it. I like that. It almost feels like we are... On like the society, the society is on the cusp of, um, like they're they're growing, 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 and they're on the cusp of a, a infinite plateau of sorts. Yeah. Like no more, no more progress beyond this point, perhaps. Ooh. I'm curious, yeah. Amelia, what uh, following along with this idea, what something is that um, another. Uh, like, you know, our neighbors sort of rely on us for? Like, what's something that we've been, uh, like, what's a form of knowledge that's been really precious that maybe is, like, we're having a shortage of right now as we're having a shortage of making more people? Interesting. Trying to think of the idea of, like, there being a shortage of knowledge is, like, hurting my brain. Um, (laughs) Is is it, like, because these creations are choosing not to go into those paths of knowledge? Like, um, well, we do have this like anarchist collective too. So, right. like, is there an issue with those mm. pe- like that they could have, should have, would have been doing these things and now aren't too? That just makes everything mm-hmm. worse. Um, no, I like that. I like the idea that the shortage is, um, from people sort of turning away from the expected expertises and mm-hmm. expert ex. So are they like, I wonder like then if they're specializing in something else that isn't like maybe considered productive in that same Mm -hmm. way. Well, it's it's kind of like in our society where like the, uh, the, the contractors, the, the, the plumbers, the, the truck drivers, that sort of stuff. Those, those professions are getting less and less with the newer generations because the newer generations are more about technology and, growing into the like um the idea space and stuff like that where where all of these like hands-on sort of things are harder to employ for mm. but still necessary but is i think it, also the understanding like too of like yeah we have all these philosophers and poets and game designers <laughs> <laughs> but yeah and, like, we, we make our saying, money podcasting and making right. games yeah, that like that's the thing that I want to do. Like the thing that I want to do doesn't need to be "quote unquote" productive. 
Mm-hmm. Or like, like or what so it's almost the like the world a, believes is productive. Yeah. Yeah. Like a crisis of self-determination is happening. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a little bit. Love cool. It. I don't know that that really answered your question. Interesting. But I like where I, we ended up. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, cool. Have we asked enough questions about the trouble? Are there any other questions about the uh, the escalating trouble? Not for me. Mm-hmm. Um, it, I think I haven't taken a turn yet this round. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I'd like to introduce a touchstone. Ooh. Oh, interesting. So as the gardener, I'm going to plant a tree. Literally, this is going to be a tree, a tree of life. Um, and as we are running low a substance, as it's becoming more and more, uh, hard to obtain and what's the word when you're only allowed to have a certain amount of something? Limited? Uh, Ration. Oh, yeah. That's that's yeah, I couldn't think of yeah. mm-hmm. that. Yeah. I mean, no, limited. <laughs> <laughs> Synonyms. Uh, <laughs> um, this is a valuable seed of a valuable tree that, if it grew to its full height, um, could end this trouble. Um, it's being planted in a secret place. Mm-hmm where hopefully it will escape the blight that has affected the other trees. And finding out the fate of this tree and who will sit in its shade will unlock a memory for my ghost, if our story gets that far. All right. And do we ask you questions about touchstones? You do one more. Uh, You you introduce challenges about why this won't be easy. Interesting. Uh, Okay, I think... I have something, maybe. Yeah. Um, because these are like so limited because we're running out of these trees. Um, is there the potential that it could be harvested before it even gets to a point where it can be shade for something? Absolutely. Yeah, that's like a desperate cut, taking it while it's you know just at a fraction of its potential. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It has to be guarded from that. Yeah, because I think, like, if you wait, it can, you know, it's like you have ten pieces or something like that. But if you do it right away, you have one, but you have it quicker. Oh, yeah, Mm -hmm. I like that idea. Interesting. You had mentioned a blight, Evan. It seems like another challenge might be just that it's, it's, there's something environmental that's making it hard for these trees to grow to full, to their full potential. Yeah, So totally. That sounds great. Introduce that as a challenge. Okay. <laughs> what? I, you sounded uh, like you yeah, were like, oh, you have I, an idea. And then- well, I had I had a thought about the world, but it, it doesn't really um, apply as a challenge to this tree. Well, that's okay. okay. I mean, we can we can end that conversation here. I've got my challenges. Great. You could take your turn. Introduce something. Yeah. Might as well. What What if um, we are so we went from um, sentient. Uh, like organic. Well, they're still organic, but it's like um, flesh and bone creatures mm-hmm. that started creating these um, wood-based automatons that have sentience. Um, what if the amount of people in the world, like like uh, flesh and blood people, is diminishing to the point where the because usually there's the symbiotic relationship of uh wildlife and whatnot and carbon dioxide producing and then the plants intake that and then create the oxygen for the people what if that balance is completely thrown off because most of society is now these automatons oh that's really cool that's cool so the, the literal composition of our air and our environment and the natural world is starting to shift away from one that's habitable yeah cool that's fascinating yeah (laughs) yeah um that's so cool do other do other societies um make people to like is this a worldwide problem or uh like a a planet-wide problem for us yeah i'm gonna say yes yeah like uh that's why it's gotten so bad it's because it's expanded worldwide cool but, like, are we the only ones 
making the, like, is this, like, our problem to fix or are other nations, like, having issues making people as well? Like... I want to say it's a global crisis. Like, um, it, it's almost akin to global warming mm-hmm. in a way. Something that we can see coming and something that we can see um, there's probably solutions for. It. But for whatever reason, we are continuing down this path of, you know, building to our saturation point. Well, we have to build some some people who know how to fix this problem, <laughs> right? <laughs> 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 oh, we're uh, automaton millennials. <laughs> <laughs> um, is this shift um hard on everyone, or is it making it more habitable to the automatons uh, and less uh, less to the flesh and blood? I I would say it's it's more habitable to the uh the flesh and blood people oh okay um which is why the um the process of creating these these people from these trees the trees are not able to grow as well because there's not enough um animal life on the planet Okay, so if so you think about like it, like flesh and blood people, like we breathe out CO two, which is what the the trees that need to grow, like turn into oxygen. Then, yeah. So it's like if there's like all of the, we're growing these trees, like we're doing okay on oxygen, but they're also not enough flesh and blood people to like. Yeah. Although then yeah. I feel like that would be both, right? Because like if there's not enough people to make CO two, then there's not enough. Yeah, it loops back around. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it eventually would loop it back around, wouldn't it? Right, because yeah. like we're not breathing out enough for trees to breathe in, and if there's not enough mm-hmm. trees, we're not breathing in. Mm-hmm. But we're at the point in the cycle where right now the trees are dominating the population. Mm-hmm. 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 And yeah, that's a, a glimpse of what's down the line for us for sure. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's so cool. cool. Um, I feel like I... I feel like it's not my turn. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whose turn it is anymore. <laughs> so I think we've done two rounds. Mm-hmm. We've done two full mm-hmm. rounds. Mm-hmm. I think so. Um, so, I mean, this is a, it's like a good point to decide how much more we want to introduce to this world, um, you know, before calling it. And, mm. um, yeah, I mean, if we were playing a normal game of Questlandia, which again, the game is unfinished, um, but like this may be a point where somebody was like, I'm going to call for a scene. Like, mm-hmm. I'm, you know, we only have one, I guess we have one, one in world character created, right? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But like, would maybe call for a scene or maybe not, or maybe make another NPC. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I feel like this is a good kind of like, cliffhanger point to leave it at yeah like, hmm. I, was, I was kind of feeling that yeah. um yeah i'd rather like not add more to it great well i want I'm to but for the, for the <laughs> right right but that's because you want to yeah. play this game now ryan <laughs> which is good I know. <laughs> yeah this is always the problem like i this is the thing that's we were we were so stupid we were so fo- what's such fools <laughs> such when we fools. made this podcast <laughs> of like oh now we have these really great characters and this really cool like setting that like we've made together okay and we're done <laughs> like yeah oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> um evan i guess do you want to like to sort of wrap up do you want to show what it would look like to do a phase change because i don't actually know i think we just made that up Oh yeah. Well, let's do a phase change. Ooh, let's do it. To, cool. To to end our visit in the world of Iris. So the phase change chart, which looks like a chart of moon phases. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are at the waxing phase where it is growing towards full. And if I were to call for the phase to change, we would roll a new trouble, and this trouble would come with a terrible and strange event. Yes. Oh. That shakes up this. Should setting. I roll a treble? Yeah. Let's do it. Right, roll it. Yes. Do it. Always. The answer's always <laughs> yes. <laughs> More treble, please. <laughs> All right. It is an hourglass. Oh, I was just you looking at that, that one. one. I haven't had that one. Okay, so let me open up my symbol reader again. Uh, that is connected to what does that say? It's a little small on my screen. Patience, uh, promises, and foresight. Oh, I mean, it feels like it 
fits right into this turning point that we're out of these uh, tree, you know, this this imbalance of our ecosystem mm-hmm. becoming a crisis. Um, and yeah, I mean, maybe there's some sort of division in who, you know, people saying that they have the answer, people convinced that they don't. <laughs> <laughs> I think that, um, like, the patience and the foresight kind of play into each other, right? Like, there are probably people that are like, oh, let's, let's like, wait a little bit longer. Like, maybe we can get these trees to grow. Maybe we can just, like, if we just keep it where it's at, we can see what happens. And then if there are people that are like, no, looking forward, this is really bad. We have to do something about it. We have to fix it now. Even if we're not sure that it will fix it, we have to try things. Mm-hmm. So if... Th- if this is a trouble with patience and, and foresight and whatnot, um, is it that society um, is is not patient enough with the trees? Well, it also, it looks like also part of the world connection of rolling this trouble is describing a terrible and strange event. Yeah. So, yeah, is like, is it, are people starting to cut down trees too early? What What is the... I mean... I'm imagining a. I'm imagining the museum on fire. Oh, <laughs> oh, dang! So, I mean, the other that, the other thing. Oh, I guess you can finish. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm imagining a movement to stop the creation, to halt it, saying it's bringing about this catastrophe, uh, and. The answer has always just been, well, we'll just make the right kind of people who will be able to avert the catastrophe. Mm. And uh, a movement, that, or the growing discontent, has been rising and rising, and one day the museum is in flames, mm. Oof. burning a lot of the sort of treasured records of how to create our greatest creations, mm. our greatest people, uh, and threatening the entire system of registering these people and you know, the sort of order that society's been going on. We don't have to know who's responsible yet. So, have people just forgotten how to make people the old-fashioned way? <laughs> right? <laughs> you never see anybody with a, you know, corn pipe in their mouth, chisel in hand. <laughs> Are the new people killing the people-making industry? <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! Look, there's not enough trees. <laughs> people are people are ruining industries. <laughs> Wasn't there like? Didn't we introduce some sort of something that was like, like an environmental factor that was ruining these trees too? Or did we already cover a, a that? A blight or a sickness that's hitting them. Yeah. Either that or the sort of composition of the atmosphere itself. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, and definitely or that composition it's a combination of the two could be where the, the composition thing. is. Letting a fungus thrive, for instance. Mm. Right. Or a certain pest. Or the trees can't get big enough. Mm. Right. Like they get to a certain point and they just stop. Oh, yeah. Tiny growing. trees. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. These but like, there's not enough. Trees. Like, there's not enough there. They're, they're too small to even use. Yeah. Oh, things are grim in the kingdom Sad of Iris. Sometimes <laughs> Iris. Yeah, <Oof>. serious. <laughs> yeah. So that, uh, I guess that oh, would man. be a phase change. Yeah, that that sounds pretty uh, significant. Yeah, that sounds like <laughs> like uh, we should leave now. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, let's not open stay here. Open up the here. ghost passage. Yeah. Open it up. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't know. We don't need that air. I don't think. <laughs> Oh no, we're as ghosts, we're the only ones that can save it because we don't need to breathe the air. Uh oh. Oh. We're just in right? time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of picturing a world that doesn't have uh, big oceans at all. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. I didn't pr- picture any water either. Yeah. Like a lot of water. Like maybe some fresh water for, or whatever, but maybe those, uh, maybe those supplies are going into creating people. Man, this is grim. What? And very surreal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's uh, that's what we're working on with Questlandia 2. Uh, obviously, there's a ton to do still, but the hope is that it's just kind of this process that, like, blends, you know, that the character creation never ends. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Well, we made sure of that. <laughs> well, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, I can, that was so much fun. I, I can easily see this just going on and on and on, and and until you're at a point where, like, well, I mean, this girl, th- this this world is just. Uh, yeah, we can't be here anymore because <laughs> it's just making me too sad. <laughs> it's toast. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, scenes scenes do a lot to sort of break up the pace of like, you know, this like kind of intense, like mental part, you know, where you're like, oh, like we're thinking about this world and making it and, you know, scenes get yeah. into the role play and like change the pace, uh, which is nice and can be refreshing. Uh, but, you know, that's not part of character creation cast. <laughs> <laughs> no. Nope. No, we don't fix the problems. We just, just make, make the problems. Them. <laughs> yep. Yes. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, thank you both so much for joining us for our Questlandia 2 character creation. Uh, this was a lot of fun. Um, Evan, thank do you. you want to remind people where they can find you online? Probably their best bet is to go onto Twitter. My username is a drawn novel, which I thought I was being clever with an anagram. And now I just get to say that mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's an anagram of your name? Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, that is clever. That, that makes a lot of sense now. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's limited as a strategy for choosing a username. <laughs> <laughs> it's a choice I made. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And Hannah, what about you? Where can people find you? Uh, People can find me on Twitter at HandBandit. I also have a Patreon at HandBandit where I do some of my own small games and also post devlogs and updates for Questlandia 2. And of course, if people want to listen to Design Doc, that is our (laughs) bi-weekly-ish podcast (laughs) where we are redesigning Questlandia uh, live, you know, for everybody Mm -hmm. to see. It's really good and extremely relaxing to listen to, I have to say. <laughs> that's really that's really nice. Other people have said that too, and that I I just I take that as a compliment. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I love when people say that about like they'll say it about ours occasionally yeah. too, especially our, our opening because we have like soft piano music under our opening. People are like, it's just so relaxing. Relaxing. <laughs> <laughs> good. Good. There's not enough of that. <laughs> Awesome. Well, and thank you everyone else for listening. Uh, Please join us on the next episode for our discussion block. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast, or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at LordNeptune, or online at LordNeptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at GingerReckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us, and remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. We gotta read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit oneshotpodcast.com where you will find other great shows like 
all my fantasy children. Each week, Aaron Catano Saez and Jeff Stormer take a listener submitted prompt and, using some of their favorite tabletop RPGs, create an original fantasy character. Along the way, they share laughs, stories, verbal hugs, and populate a shared universe one story at a time. 